All right. We're starting with gas today. What we're going to talk about is your net worth or the lack of a net worth. One of the biggest problems that's happening today is people don't have any net worth. They're either negative net worth or none whatsoever. I have my business which produces cash. That's an asset. So at some point in your life, you got to start stacking assets. If you don't, it's going to catch up with you. It's going to create some problems and some consequences. First of all, you got to get away from that $550 a month car note. It's killing your net worth. You go ahead and you sign up for this car, 72 months, 84 months. So by the time you get finished paying for this car, it's not worth what you pay for it because it's depreciated. So one of the things you, you got to do is get out of the habit of buying brand new cars with financing. If you buy four to five cars, that could delay retirement by 20 years. And this is how much money buying new cars sucks out of your spending power. So once again, I think everybody needs to be debt free. I know that's a grand ambition and I'm not talking about on the business side. I think business debt is great. I'm talking about personal debt. When I hear people call Dave Ramsey and they're talking about, I'm 120,000, I'm 200,000, I'm 300,000 in personal consumer loan debt, credit cards. And I'm like, good Lord, what happened to you? Did anyone ever sit you down? And I, I think this is a big problem with many people. No one ever sits you down and says, hey, this is the deal. If you do this over here, you're going to have a good life. You do this over here, your life is not going to be so good. It's going to be struggle and misery. And what I, I want to talk about tonight is people establishing net worth. So this is what I want you guys to do this weekend. I want you to take a piece of paper, go around your house, calculate what everything in your house costs because you it's in your house. You own it. That's part of your net worth. Then your stocks, your bonds, your business, whatever, figure out whatever that's worth. Put it on paper and see if you actually have a net worth. Because net worth is calculated by subtracting your liabilities from your assets. <clears throat> now, if you don't have any assets, I mean, no average American may have a net worth of six to $12,000. Because you go online and it'll say the average net worth is like 92,000 or 600 some thousand. And those, that, that's skewed. Because if you had a net worth of $680,000, you would have assets where if a $1,000 emergency popped up, there'd be, there'd be no sweat. So I think it's more in the eight dollars to $12,000 range. And this is why if you start a business and develop an asset that produces cash, this is going to drastically increase your net worth. This is going to put you in a position to be a baller, a shot caller. Because, uh, like, take real estate. I think Erica said if you own three houses, you're in the 1%. Three houses. And this is one of the things, that, this is why I'm really excited about real estate. It doesn't take a lot. I mean, Grant Cardone, 
It's like I got 7,000 doors. That's very impressive. But for an average person, one to two rentals can change your life because they will establish a net worth. A piece of property that I was looking at that they're trying to sell for 159 I wasn't going to offer them that because I went ahead and found out what it sold for less than a year, for a year, a little bit over a year ago. It sold for 109 and they're trying to get one, they try to get a $50,000 premium. So they could probably push 30. So this piece of property has appreciated $30,000 in 16 months. So you get yourself two rentals in good locations. You get that type of appreciation. Within five years, you could quadruple your net worth just on those two pieces of property, which produce cash. This is why, you know, like today we were talking about wholesaling, doing deals and stuff. You got to get in the game with a quickness. You guys got to get moving. You guys have got to get into it because even with this coming recession, uh, housing prices will probably soften. And I will still be buying real estate because I know it's going to come back. Plus, right now, real estate inventory is low in Atlanta in certain price ranges. And it's crazy. I'm seeing hood properties go for $300,000, $400,000. Hood properties. So we got a lot of stuff going on here. But real estate should be part of your plan. Even if you own a business, because see, this is one of the reasons I'm getting in real estate, to establish a more durable net worth. I have this company that makes sales, that gives me a net worth. But I have to push the company. I have to market and I have to advertise. Right now, I'm taking the Facebook course to drastically increase my income. Because the plan is to increase my income to a mil a month. And if I can do that and keep my spend proportionally, because I may have to do 1.5 or 1.7 million to have the million, all that money is going into real estate every month. Because if I could get there, because, you know, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get there. But if, wow, like, say, January, February, or, you know, April next year, I'm doing that. You will see some interesting videos here on this channel. You can't include the mortgage. You must deduct the cost of your mortgage from your assets because it's a liability. Erica Nicole, hearing your Airbnb talk from the last past live streams, do it. Currently smashing Airbnb over 480 per night plus cleaning fee. Oh, one piece of property that I was looking at. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you. Let me go ahead and set this up. I'm going to tell you exactly what I was going to do with it. Because I've been hearing a lot of people talk about Airbnb and they're trying to they're trying to go super cheap with it and they're not establishing any real you know uh So let's see. All right. Let's go here to Zillow. All right. Let's just go to eight. All right. So and this right here may be a contender here. 
this place is walking distance to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So I'm going to go look at that next week because uh, what I would do is I would trick it out. I would hire an interior decorator and make that place swank, maybe throw a pinball machine or something in there because one of the things, you know, I've been consuming all this information that you want your Airbnb listings to have some wow factor. So, you know, hey, there's a pinball machine. Maybe there's Darth Vader up in their joint. You know, make it a fun place and get, like, this $200 to $400 a night. But this isn't the one I was looking at. Let's see. This is the one. Uh, it was pretty much what I was going to do was rip up those parquet floors. And put some nice furniture in there. Some nice artwork on the walls. Nice leather sofa and chair which I already have. I mean, it was going to be super simple because where this, the location of this, it's in, the, it's, it's in Buckhead. So once I get it all swank, I can get 250 maybe 280 a night. But the building does not allow rentals, no FHA, and no pets. So I'm like, I got a condo and I can't have a pet? That's what they said. So this is what I plan on doing is getting a rental property and do an Airbnb because I can make two to three times what I would make normally with just rent. So I would flow. I would go with that. So that's going to be the first piece of real estate. Consumerism is a virus living like I'm broke for the next 18 months. Hey, I, I actually put away a lot of money last month because I was really on my budget. Eric and Cole, I'm in Las Vegas. Amenities and interior design is what sets you apart 100%. Yeah, I was going to spend probably three to 4000 getting the place ready to give it that wow factor. Oh, yeah, you want to get rid of the mortgages. Because, see, Dave Ramsey, they did this study. All millionaires have one thing in common. They paid off their house early. The average was 10 years or less. And I'm going to tell you why. Millionaires, they could do math. And they know if they take them 30 years to pay off that mortgage, they're going to pay three to four times the price of that house. <coughs> so, yeah, you want to get rid of that. Don, Baba, I don't know what you should do. Eric Nicole, thanks everyone about with Airbnb. I kick it in the Castina and let my crib pay for itself. I'm going to manage my Airbnb. Because I, I need this experience. And this is why I'm going to buy something that's not too far from me. Because, you know, in some cities, they're cracking down on their B&B, like Washington, D.C. But Atlanta is a free-for-all. And also, the backup plan, if they do some of their B&B, just turn it into a rental.
Erica Nicole, yes, I have a pool, pool table, cabana, gym, artwork everywhere. When the guests come, they were like, they were never there, never trashed guests. Jamie Fields, I'm a follower of Erica Classic Climb blog. I'm on my third rental in less than a year. Real estate, the best business to be in. I agree. Yeah, because essentially what I'm going to do is I have my holding company already established and I'm funding my capital account. So what I'm going to do is create an operating company probably next week. And then I'm going to move the money to the operating company because uh, the operating company is going to be probably named something wonderful properties, LLC. And I'm going to run it like a business from day one. Cause I know the power of interior design. Look at, look at what these wholesalers do. They find a piece of dilapidated property Someone goes and makes it sexy and they sell it for three times what they pay for it. So one of the things, you know, cause I, I'm on a quest for getting some more assets. I got this one asset, which is this company, but I'm like, I need more and you need more. You need to start collecting some income producing assets because one of the big problems is we have a people who are caught up in the American consumerism and they're caught up with the American credit system to the point that they get, they get like, they break out in highs if they had to spend their own cash on something. So this is, you know, I'm going to look at some property next week. I'm going to start going to some real estate uh, meetups because um, I may do the first property all cash and the second property I may, I may, you know, I may get into some creative financing. So we will see. Because uh, the Airbnb thing makes a lot of sense to me because if I can get something that's close to the stadium or in Buckhead where there's people in and out, in and out, in and out, it's, it's going to be the rent and the real estate agent that I'm talking to. She said the Cumberland area next to the Braves Stadium does very well as well. So, you know, we, we all got to get some assets. I'm talking to myself right here. Because um, my plan is for the next 10 years is every year to buy real estate. So I'm gonna either come out of here with 20 some properties or 30 something properties. And I'll be 62. Cause that's, the, that's what I'm looking at. Cause you know, I like to hustle and I like doing these live streams and stuff, but am I gonna to wanna to do this when I'm 62? I don't really know. And I don't want, I wanna have the option. You know, it's like, okay, well, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do a live stream today. I want to have the option. Because um, I've been studying Airbnb and this is one of the things that many people do. They go in, they try to do a cheap. And like one place I saw had these Ikea lamps and stuff and like if you want someone to let loose a bread, you got to jazz it up a little bit. I've got artwork here that I'm not going to use. I'm going to put an Airbnb. I'm going to put fancy lights. I'm going to make it look like something out of a magazine. That's what people will pay for because especially chicks, women will pay more for fancy packaging than anybody else. And that's one of the things I got to do. Yeah, SunTrust is popping. And over in the Galleria area, there's a lot of businesses. There's some mega hotels over there. Because there's only going to be one property in the beginning. So that's going to be easy for me to manage. Uh, I've got a house, I got a housekeeper already. 
So this is the path to developing more assets. At one point, my book was a passive income asset. Then it, the demand just fell off. And one of the things that you can do, you know, I'm going to work on this next week, is get more intellectual property up. Oh, yeah, the visual. I mean, I've seen, because I've been studying Airbnb, and the ones with the highest prices, they snazzy. They look like something out of a magazine. And they're booked. They're booked, they're booked. Because uh, I'm going to put in a nice leather sofa set, a very nice dining room set. And, like, I was going to rip up the floors of that one. Because I figure they were asking 159, but like 16 months ago they bought it for 109. So I was going to offer them 135 because this is you know part of the game. But you know we you know, there's an offer on that piece of property right now, but because they don't allow rentals, it was a non-starter. So you know jazz it up, make it an experience. Uh, there's one chick, she's got a, a place, and the whole place is pink. And she's got a pink theme going on. And I think she charges like $280 a month for it, $280 a night for it. Because, you know, in the beginning, to get people there, I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to open at 99 bucks to get some traffic in there. But if I can rent it at twenty-five at ninety-nine dollars for twenty-five days out the month, that's twenty-five hundred dollars. That's almost double the rent. And as I get the reviews and stuff out, then I can jack up the rate. Rod for real said, heard they're giving it a theme works really well too, as a name for the property. Absolutely. Riches in the niches. Because one of the things that I've seen with Airbnb is, you know, going back to what Rod Real Estate said, a theme. And, you know, there's so many things I can do with this. And, I, I'm, and also one of the things, uh, there's a guy, they were very conscious on cost of furniture. What I would do is I would go out, because I've got this uh, mattress that you know came in the box and then it had to inflate but that sucker's comfortable i think it was like 900 bucks i would go ahead and put in that we have these um special mattresses because you know a cheap mattress can wreck somebody's back so i was going to spend some money on the mattresses uh because it's going to be it's going to sleep four uh, i may say five with the sofa but once again, you know, there, there's so many things I can do, and I'm very excited about this because I can set something up. And then, you know, and also to have either tear my camera on high professional mode or hire someone to take some pictures. I hear that Airbnb sends people out to take pictures, but I'm not going to have time for them to come out because I'm going to, you know, after that first month, I want to raise the rent to the rate to 150 from 99. So I'm going to I'm going to be a man on a mission. I'm going to be running around like my hair is on fire. The low mattress comes in a very comes in a box very comfortable. I would have to look at my mattress cuz I'm going to put those suckers in there and put it in there. Brand new mattresses. Um they're very, I mean, the sucker is super comfortable. So that this is one of the things. And also, I will be documenting this process. I'm a little sad that that, that building wouldn't work, so I will have to find something else because real estate is about location, location, location. I got to find a location that's near venues. In this uh, two-bedroom loft, which I can trick out, I got some plans for that, 
It's near the aquarium. It's near the Coca-Cola Museum. It's near Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So these are things. Uh, it's near State Farm Arena. So there's a lot of stuff because that's one of the tricks that you, you have to find it that's near something. These big attractions. And real estate's going to be my play as well as intellectual property because like one of the things I'm doing since this is football season, I won't be doing any videos or live streams on the weekends. I'm just going to do them Monday through Friday. And I may do something Sunday because Sunday's Sunday morning because I may want to make an announcement. But typically, I'm not going to do anything on Saturdays. That, that's a hard given. And I want you guys to start thinking of income producing assets and getting your income because, like I said, two, two houses is life changing. Let's say you, your name is Bob. You go out, you get two houses, you get a mortgage, and you got like an extra $1,000 a month coming in. Now, if you're smart, you're going to put all that in the bank the first year to build up a surplus so if something goes wrong with the house, you have money to fix it. But, I mean, just to, I got a friend who's on a disability. He gets $750 a month. When he was laid off, that money was highly appreciated. So, all right, for Rod, for real estate. Because uh, once, you know, because if I can go ahead and get this property, and I can get some Erica Nicole numbers where this thing's doing like 200 bucks a night. And I get it. I rent it. My fingers are so happy. And I rent it 25 days. That's five G's. Times 12. That's $60,000. So this property on this accelerated schedule, because I'm probably going to have to spend, because you're just not finding a lot of stuff for 150. I'm probably going to have to spend close to 200K. Well, they may ask 200K, but I'm going to offer them something else. But if, uh, if I pay 200K times four, in year three and a half, I'll start paying taxes on this income because I've gotten my money back. So, and I'm going to keep, you know, so, I mean, if I can get something hot like that. And also there's this guy that's got this course on how to rent from someone else and also have an Airbnb going that way. So I'm probably going to do that too. Just depends once I get into this real estate world. I may do a little wholesaling to quicken the pace. Eric and Cole, don't forget the cleaning fee of two fifty. I've seen cleaning fees of like eighty dollars. I think it just depends on the property. How much does Airbnb take, Eric and Nicole? Because that's something that I, I've not factored in because I don't know. Because I already got a house cleaner who does an excellent job, and she, you know, she does all this fancy stuff. But the intention, because if, if this first property goes like I want it, I will go ahead and set up two or three or four more because, you know, there are people you can rent property from and do it as an Airbnb. A lot of folks just think Airbnb is too much hassle. And once I get involved, I'll share with you what's going on with that because I, I, I'm kind of excited because this is going to be a new project where my creativity can run wild. I can use my copywriting skills to write the ads and to keep people engaged and just set it up. <clears throat> so we will see. But you got to get some assets because this thing about being in debt, 
where you have a negative net worth. That's really bad. And the millennials who got screwed coming out of college during this Great Recession, now they have lost income because your first few jobs predict your income later down the road. So they have lost tens of thousands of dollars of earnings. And here's another recession, and it's going to, they don't have any net worth, they don't have any assets, and they're in a situation where it's going to get worse because once you know, the older you get, because typically most people, earnings peter out at 45. 45, that's where most people's earnings stabilize or they start going down. So you're 35 years old. You're already on that low income trajectory. You have no assets. You have a high debt load. As an old person, it's looking lugubrious. It's looking pretty bad because you don't have a lot of time to bounce back. Those 10 years are going to come and go so quick. They take between five and, oh, okay. No more than 10%. That's cool. It all depends. We could sleep seven, but I charge more for the seventh person. I'm probably going to stick with sleeps four just for the, the first property. And then once I get creative and once I get um, involved in the system and know how it works, because I like what this one guy, he, he's got a book out, a course, how to set up Airbnbs and how to rent because, you know, for him, he can set up an Airbnb for about four to 5,000. First, second month's rent, the furniture and stuff. I'm anticipating 10,000 between the rent and to set up the Airbnb. Because if my plan works, I'm going to repeat it several times because you know, just take the cash from the first Airbnb, reinvest the cash in these other Airbnbs, um, go through a corporation and get 10 of those mugs. And if I got 10 properties doing 5,000 a month, that's 50 G's a month. $600,000 a year. Then take that money and get some rentals. Because six hundred thousand, you, you you'd be a hard money lender. You could be cat. You'd be a, a cash buyer, as they like to say. So charge more for your couch sleeper. Okay, so if it sleeps five, because it will have a nice couch in there. Uh, Raymond Broomfield. So being broke with a business has better upside than a great job with debt. If you got a good business, you won't be broke. You want to stay far away from broke as possible. Eric and Nicole, I agree 100%. Look against what the hotels around are charging plus their fees and price that way. Location, 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 location. If this Airbnb is near, because like, let's look at what's going to happen in the dome, well, the, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We got college football, NFL, and the soccer team. Then we're going to have parts of the playoffs. Those are big events, because one of the things that I've heard is that like when there are events coming to town, they drag up the prices. So, it's going to be interesting. So, th this is, you know, because uh, this will be another business within the business. I will probably add to the art of holding the setup for the real estate because I have a holding company for the real estate company. I'm going to create an operating company next week. And I'm going to use QuickBooks because... You know, there's going to be a lot of charges that I, I would be running. Did 
Eric and Nicole. They will tell you how many then busted their head for additional 150. Talk. Go cross that head. Because one of the reasons that I'm going to go kind of chic with the furniture and stuff is the W's Hotels. When the W Hotels came out, they were like these boutique hotels that were snazzy and they attracted a younger, uh, more female crowd, which paid more money for that look. So the look is going to be, and this, this is something else too. Once I do this, I'll probably create a course because let's say you, you can't get into traditional real estate. But if you can come up with 10K, you could do an Airbnb. If you get your Airbnb to 50K a month and then parlay that money into two or three more of them, you got 20K a month coming in with four, air, four properties. So this is another way to get into the, whole, the, the real estate game. And wholesaling, I'm probably going to, because I, I got to look at that, because wholesaling, they explain it. It sounds very simple, but it's complex because you've got to find these people and you have to touch them because, you know, first time you find them and contact them, they may ig you. Then you got to keep contacting them. So that's the sales process. Raymond Broomfield, not with real estate. You, the location is really, really key. That, 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 that's something that I've noticed. Because the place that I was going after, they, they don't allow rentals. And they don't allow pets. So if you, I'm like, you bought your condo, you can't have a dog in your condo? That's just crazy. So there's going to be a lot more stuff that's going to come down the pike in terms of knowledge and education because I see being able to scale up this Airbnb business much quicker with more profit than traditional real estate. So I would probably put my energy there, getting five or ten locations, and as that money come in, invest this in regular real estate. Erica, Erica Nicole, location kills it. One mile from the Strip Convention Center. People love a $7 Uber ride. Hey, uh, this, this other place I'm going to show y'all. Let me get in here. I think I showed it to y'all to begin with. Yeah. This place is within walking distance. They can walk to the stadium from here. So that's like a, a $4 Uber ride. And I can funk this up. Because I would definitely put some man, like, there it is. Yeah, I mean, walking distance to the, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It's like right there. I would change all that up. I would get something a little bit more chic. You know, a lot of people like the loft look. I would definitely do it up much better because I wouldn't have like the cheap bookcase. And this is where I would spend some money with an interior designer to get this place looking tray chic. I would also paint. Yeah, definitely paint. And I would get some steampunk beds. Steampunk furniture. Because they got this mission stuff in there.
they got a kid. And something else too, I'm putting a washer and dryer in all of my rentals. That's what they do in these luxury apartments. They all come with a washer and dryer. Uh, may hook up the kitchen a little bit. Just depends. It may come later. See, this, this almost looks like, this kind of looks like some of the furniture that they be putting in Airbnb. Mismatched. Look at this. They don't match. You got all this stuff. This, it just screams, I'm broke. It just screams that. I don't care. So there's a lot that goes into this. And this is where my furniture background will come into play because I know I can stage a house. I know exactly what to do. What's up, Johnny? There's gold in the hood. Uh, I will say that these hood properties, the pricing on them is crazy. Uh, that's a, it, it's a, it's not a condo. It's a, one of those places that they converted into, uh, I guess it's a condo, I don't know. Sky Bubba, you got me thinking, besides credit and getting money, what would you say the biggest hurdle in the real estate game? Having the time. Real estate can be very time intensive. Eric and Nicole, put that in your descriptions. People love to know about those Uber rides. Good deal. Eric and Nicole, that's your deck space, yo. Because what I would do up there is I hang those lights that people like to hang. So there, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. And one of the things is, this is because I'm an internet guy and I'm used to spending money. I wouldn't go into these Airbnb, you know, cheap. Because if, if, I, if I, my cost are 10K to set it up and I make 50K the first year, that's easy. Because essentially this money that's coming from these, these units is not going in my pocket. That's going, because essentially what's going to happen is the rental income is going to pass up from the operating company to the holding company, and it's going to go back in the capital account. I mean, if I'm at a point where I can buy a house or better yet, two or three every month, whoo, I mean, I, I, I just tingle at the thought, like, if I could buy three houses per month, that's 36 houses in one year. That's crazy. So this is what I'm looking at. And I want you guys to be looking at, you know, how you can get some income because wholesaling is a good way to get you some income up to get into the real estate game. This Airbnb thing is a good way to get you some in income to get into real estate because everybody needs to be looking at getting more assets. Everybody needs to get as many assets as they can. And uh, what I will do is before and after pictures of the spot and I'll uh, do negotiating. Cause see right now, cause the, the thing is, like that first one that I can't get, I looked up what it sold for, and I know that they're being somewhat ambitious with that 159 price. I was going to offer them 135 because that leaves, that puts some money in their pocket that handles all closing costs. But we will see. Change the toilet water holder to make it economical and save on the water bill. 
Okay. Like my house has those, those low flow toilets. So, you know, we may get into that because essentially I want the place to be swank. I want it to be swank. And, you know, I want you guys to think about establishing a net worth. And you got to get out of debt. You got to get out of debt. This is killing people. Now, once again, we're talking about consumer personal credit card debt. I'm not talking about business debt. Like if you, because, oh, I, fig I figured out something. You know, FHA, Freddie Mac, and Fannie Mae, they only allow you to have four mortgages before they buy your mortgage from the bank. If you have five mortgages in your name, they're not going to buy your mortgages from the bank. And that's where this whole, because I know someone who's gotten past that. And, you know, it's because I was told to go to the small community banks that keep their loans in-house in their portfolio you could get 20, 30 loans, 40 loans, 50 loans. So it, it's real crazy. Now, I also am a veteran. And what I may do once I get rolling is use that VA loan to get a property. And I would stay in it for a minute because you got to stay in it. Then I would move out. But, you know, it's about net worth. you got to get yourself some assets because assets, like when I, I had my heart attack because I had a cash-producing asset, even though I was at St. Joe's Hospital flat on my back, didn't even know what day it was, I had money coming in. I was sick. I didn't work. Had money coming in. And this is the power of, of having cash producing that assets because you get sick, your money keeps coming in. It's called being Fannie and Freddie Mac backed out. Jay Morrison has videos of how to be a first time home buyer over and over. Well, this is gonna go past first time because I'm probably going to get three properties the first year once I start letting go. And also, when you call a real estate agent to tell them that this is for an investment property and you, you don't plan on living in it and you don't have a house to sell, the conversation cools a little bit. They look at it totally differently. Erica Nicole. How long have you had your Airbnb property? Because once you get out here and you start sniffing around, you find deals. And one of the things that I learned in the storage auction business is inventory can make up your net worth. Because when we shut down, it took me six months of just selling stuff to get it all out the warehouse. So th there, there's many, many different ways to do this. But once I do this, because, you know, uh, once I go out to someone and say, look, I want to turn this into an Airbnb, and, you know, I'll take over all maintenance issues and stuff. No one will ever be calling you. They'll be calling me. We, we, we will have to just see. I know Eric and Nicole, that deck space, I would put some lights up there. I would put some stuff up there to make it interesting. But this is just a conversation to get you guys to think about establishing net worth and getting out of debt. <clears throat> I can tell you from personal experience how freeing and liberating it is to have no personal consumer debt. 
Now, I do have a PayPal loan. Well, I had one. That sucker got paid off today. And I'm probably going to go ahead and get another one. And that's the only debt that I have. I only have, if I have debt, it's going to be business debt. It's going to be debt to move the business, to increase sales. I'm just, you know, consumer stuff. I mean, I, I can pay cash for stuff that I want. I, I, I just would not go crazy with my credit card buying stuff, getting in debt like that. <clears throat> Just purchased it in May. Wow. Just purchased it in May. Only made one mortgage payment of my own. The rest Airbnb has paid. That's awesome. And the house account look, looking pretty. Israel, I started with fix and flips, but now I'm looking to start building from the ground up. But this recession is holding me back from building new bills. I'm a GC. Well, I mean, people, people are going to still be hustling during the recession, but I can understand why you want to build from the ground up. Because once again, you don't have to fix anything. You just, you start with a blank slate. So I can understand that. Because I've been watching some of these rehab videos and they start demo and they find all kinds of surprises. Termites, all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, Be Real Phoenix is one of the best places for real estate right now. Uh, Weldopedia. I think switching from a day job to a second ship job is a huge advantage for someone about to start their journey of debt crushing and door openings. Whatever works for you. Because I used to know a guy. He, he actually worked two full-time jobs. Cause he had this ambitious plan and it was crazy because he worked over at Piedmont and he came over to Scottish right and he worked two full-time jobs. All right. So you know, there, there's many ways to get assets. And the quickest way to start building assets, like look at Erica Nicole. She, she's got this debt that's being serviced by the revenue of her product, the house. She only made one mortgage payment and Airbnb has made the rest, cool. Once the walls are up and up a home, you don't know what you're going to find. I've seen videos, man, Rod, for real estate. It's crazy. Eric and Nicole, my cleaning company still rolling in Florida. I love checking mail in the morning. Checks. So you are absentee owner of a cleaning company. You have a real business that runs itself with little involvement from you. And you just get those checks. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. And this is, once again, a business is the cornerstone of you putting together income-producing assets. A business is something you can put together fairly quickly within one to three years and start rolling the money and then learn the language of money and set yourself up nice. Because if it wasn't for assets, I shudder to think what would have happened with, with my st life with, with, with a heart attack. I mean, there are people who've been in similar situations who lost their car, got evicted from the apartment because they couldn't work. This is how a lot of homeless people end up homeless. They get ill. It's a, it's a prolonged illness. They don't have no money coming in. They don't have no family. No one's taking care of them. Out there on the streets. And this is once, you know, there's always going to be more good times than bad times unless you just slept rock or you, you're some crazy person. And during the good times is when you build. 
It's like be that like that squirrel stacking those nuts. And during this recession, I think there's going to be some crazy deals out there. Eric and Nicole, yes, systems and processes. Answer the phone, schedule, send emails, subs go clean. I cash checks. You know, cleaning businesses can be very profitable if they're well run. But we'll be fine in a few weeks to close the deal on the building I've been working for for two years. So you're going to get you some commercial real estate. Nice. We got people out here who are doing big things. So that's very niche, a construction cleaning company. So once again, you know, hopefully this conversation got it in your head in your noggin, in your brain, that you need to get some income producing assets. I mean, it's mandatory because even if you have a good job and a good salary, you should take some of that money and deploy it on getting yourself some assets. Because you love your job, cool. You just go out and get your four or five rentals, you get your money working for you, you have more money. I mean, that's the name of the game. So once uh, we get on this, because, you know, I will be talking about my first property. I'll be talking about, because I got to start networking. Because there's another property. Matter of fact, I can show it to y'all. There's another property. Let's see. Okay. Now here's another one. I got to call them and see if you can have rentals in this building. Now this is a one bedroom but it's a very, it's a, it's a large bedroom, one bedroom. And it's got the swank appeal. And it's in Buckhead. So this person has some good, good uh, design, edit. So I'm going to go talk to them. But I know from a profit standpoint, a two bedroom is just going to be better. So that's, I'm, you know, I'm interested in that. And I can rent that out. I can rent that out in this market for about 2000 a month. So that's $24,000 a year. So that sucker will pay for it itself in eight years. And I know that at some point I'll be able to raise the rents. And here's another one. I got to check out the location. Because this one definitely has, you know, it's already painted. It's got hardwood floors. But I don't know about that location. I got to scout that location. And also, I got to find out if they allow rentals. Uh, there's a lot of buildings that do not allow rentals. They just don't for some reason. And then there will be a washer and dryer and everything at home. So, you know, this is just a few things. Because next week, I'm going to be going out. I 
and checking out some properties. Because I didn't do it this week. So we will be going in there. Eric on the call. Now I'm trying to get a 100K post construction cleaning contract. Dion Majette just paid off my fourth property in Jersey. Buy more property, man. Dion, buy more property. If you've paid off four properties, I would get more property. And congratulations. Raj Motive, I've seen some people's checks. It doesn't, it doesn't work for any property. Your property's got to be in a good location to make those high checks. Uh, vending machines, yeah, that's, I wouldn't do that. I would uh, also do little creative touches, like leave them a bottle of wine or something like that. Yeah, yeah, asking about the short-term rentals. Definitely. Because uh, once I get into this, because, you know, I'm going to do this. Because the backup plan is if the Airbnb doesn't work, just turn it into a regular rental. So this, this is already locked and loaded in my mind. And, you know, the property's got to be in the right location. That much I already inherently know. But, you know, I just want you guys to think about income producing assets. Like Dion has four pieces of property that are paid off. Uh, I would get more property. You know, I would not because, I mean, you, you've already proven that you're a successful real estate investor. Go hard with that. Sit down and write up some goals. Because don't do anything like take the equity out of the houses and put it in a completely different business venture that you don't know that much about. Don't do that. That's a good way to lose your money. So get more property, man. Get, get, get more property. Because one of the reasons that I'm so keyed up on property and looking at real estate, there's like a million and one ways you can make money with real estate. You don't have to have good credit. You don't even have to buy a house to make money with wholesaling. You can have bad credit and do subject to get the homeowner to give you like a 10 year loan. And then at 10 years, you know, because if your credit, because 10 years is enough time to fix even the most atrocious credit. If you're just sitting around waiting for stuff to fall off. So you can like, there, there's so many ways you can do this. There, there's so many ways you can do this. And it's, it's pretty exciting. Buying my grandma's house, it's in the hood, but I would fix it out and rent it up. Okay. And anyone that inherits a house, go ahead and take on the responsibility. If it needs to be updated, update the house and turn it into a rental and get yourself some money. Because, you know, if you, if you get a house that someone can move into immediately, I, I would not sell that because that would give you consistent cash flow. Because I know everybody wants that one big check, but that consistent cash flow. Uh, Bergson is a needed service. If you know how to do it, do it. Go ahead and make those moves because for folks who are creative, for folks who are real go-getters, for people who are out here 
shaking these money trees. They're going to make money during this recession. I intend to be one of those people. Recession? Whatever. I'm going to still be making money. That's the trick. All right. It's Friday night. I know y'all got drinking to do, chicks to hang out with. So I will see you guys either Sunday morning or Monday because I got a lot of stuff I got to do this weekend. So with that, I will catch you guys out later.